Hello, is this, uh, do we have out there yet? Looks like there might be a few folks there. We're a couple minutes early. Hey, Gumby. Oh, Kitty's on. Hello, Kitty. Huh, I always wanted to say that. You know, guys, I'm... have to do that. Hello Dave, how are you? Can someone let me know if the uh, the audio is, is okay here? Because I have not done this before. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Lake Ontario, New York. Probably a bit chillier there than it is here. Oh, thanks Gubby. Appreciate it. Thank you, Kitty. Oh, I'm glad the audio is good, Kevin. Thank you. Hey, Steve, you made it. Good to see you. And Brian, good to see you, too. Hello, Everett. So we've already got 14. That's, that's fantastic. I, I had no idea what to expect, so I'm glad, uh, glad to see that some of you can make it. Some, uh, some of my most common commenters are here which i which i really appreciate it blue dog hello eric how are you and the durham duke is on oh good glad glad you can hear it well hello michael you're getting snow oh boy we're hoping that uh we're still a bit off from that naptown pipes and sticks hello there chris good good to see you coming in from maryland um I saw the uh, the Durham Duke sign in there, and I'm actually smoking a pipe that uh, I got from the Durham Duke, and this is one that we affectionately call Mr. Winslow. It's a Paul Winslow pipe, a fantastic pipe, and uh, I loaded this up right before I went live. And what I'm smoking to start with tonight is actually this big jar of number 10 Downing Street, which you've heard me talk about before as uh, an old time favorite, uh, not available anymore. I was fortunate enough to have uh, someone walk up to me at a pipe show and just hand me that, that jar and say, I heard you liked it. Uh, so I, I rationed it out a bit, but I figured tonight's a special occasion. We're celebrating a bit, so we'll have some number 10 Downing Street. It's a old Latakia blend that uh, is just different. Dark Flake Scented. I've heard a lot about that lately. And Royal Yacht. Is that the new Royal Yacht? I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to have to keep going back to these because while my vision is great, um, for distance, uh, the stuff up close is really tough for me. So seeing the, uh, the comments is, is a little bit hard. So you're going to have to just put up with me wearing the, the cheaters tonight. Uh, so I hope everyone's doing well. We got 32 people on already. That's, that's fantastic. So plan for tonight is, is really kind of simple. Um, I figured I wanted to do this just to, um, oh, thank you, George. I appreciate it. I just wanted to do a bit of a celebration of the fact that I finally got the shop back together and, uh, you know, sort of turned a page in, in the history of cane rod pipes. Um, also to, to do something fun with, with you guys, uh, and, and, you know, with, with all subscribers, commenters, every, everybody that makes the channel what it is. Uh, and as part of that, I thought it would be fun to try to have a little contest. So, uh, if you saw any of the previews for this, I am going to, going to do a contest. I think I know how to do this. We'll find out before the end of the stream if it actually works out. So what I'm planning to do is we'll probably stay on for an hour, hour and a half, something like that, depending on how many questions we get and you know what you guys want to talk about. Uh, so somewhere around the 45 minute mark, I'll actually run the contest and, and we'll be giving away two tins of tobacco. The first one is one you should already know about because it was in the, the promos and everything. This is a tin of uh, Cornell and Deal Black Frigate. And, uh, hey, cut that out, Matthew. 
Um, this is a tin of uh, Black Frigate that is uh, from Cornell and Deal, and this is a Latakia blend. It's Latakia Turkish and uh, what they call a Navy Cavendish, which is a rum-soaked Virginia, all pressed into a cake. It's really good stuff, um, and it, it, I find it to be a really nice holiday blend. It, it goes well with the holidays, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> yes, Steve, I know. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> I'm sorry, they're commenting on my Eagles. The Eagles are playing the Patriots tomorrow. It's a it's a big game uh, rematch of uh, the Super Bowl that the Patriots lost before they did the one the last one. Uh, so anyway, you get Black Frigate. And the other uh, part of the giveaway is this tin of Black House. Now, Black House is a, uh, a Sobrani, what is it, Sobrani 759? I think I got the numbers right there. Um, an attempt to match that by Russell Litt. It's a very good, um, very, very good match. Uh, it's an extremely good Latakia blend. Uh, I like it a lot. And this is an older uh, tin. They, they don't put it in these tins anymore. So the tin art on this is very cool, I think. Um, and you, you just can't get these. It's from uh, tw early 2014. So there's there's a fair amount of age on this. And this one is from 2016, July of 2016. So they've been cellared for a while. Should be uh, nice and smooth. And I think you'll you'll enjoy them both if, if you happen to be the winner. So we will uh, have a little contest right around the 45-minute point, And uh, I'll explain to you when we get there how it's going to work. So with that as preamble... Uh, what do you guys want to want to do? Do you want do you have questions that you'd like to ask? Uh, then then let's not make fun of my eagle sign, or I won't answer your question. <laughs> Kitty's thinking. Okay, Kitty. <laughs> well, he asks for questions, and the room goes silent. <laughs> How's the weather? Oh, that's a good one, Everett. That's always easy to get conversation started. Thank you. Um, it's it's a little cold. It wasn't bad today at all. Um, high 30s, so not not bad, sunny. How long have you worked on pipes? Um, well, it's it uh, it depends on how you define worked on pipes. I mean, if you mean professionally, like actually have customers and charge people to fix their pipes, that's only been two, three years, something like that. But I've been working on pipes for, for over 15 years. I've been smoking pipes for over 30 and, you know, originally started to get into estates and stuff um, about 15 years ago and sort of learned as I was going. And, uh, yeah, so so the answer is about 15 years, but only professionally for about uh, two, two or three. Um, I saw uh, any plans for refurb videos. Yes, absolutely. I mean, one of the main reasons I wanted to set this space up was to have better space to, to dedicate to videos so that when I'm doing other things, I don't have to like cart away all the video stuff. And one of the things that I've done is this camera mount here, which uh, will allow me to shoot directly down right here on the work surface. What do you do to a state pipe? With what looks like a new stem on it. So, so you're asking um, if, if the new stem... I'm not sure I understood that question, so if you want to ask it again, um, you know, if it looks like a new stem, I usually will just clean them out with alcohol, you know, just a pipe cleaner and alcohol, and, and you're good to go. Um, I do still fly fish, not as frequently as I'd like to, but uh, I'm hoping to to change that. It's been, it's been a while uh, due to mostly health issues, but I'm getting past those. Still need a pipe smoking. How do you decide which pipes for English are aromatic? Boy, that's a big question. Uh, uh, you know, you'll, you'll get different opinions on pipe shapes that are better for this or better for that. Um, sorry, Blue Dog. I actually, I actually turned off one of the strips of lights because I felt that it was too dark in the shop tour video. Um, uh, too bright, rather. So you'll get lots of opinions on whether, you know, you, you should always use a broad bowl for Latakia or you should always use a tall, narrow bowl for Latakia. I can tell you what what I find best. I mean, I prefer tall, narrow bowls for uh, Virginias, mostly Virginia flakes. I think they work very, very well. 
uh, for, for uh, Virginia Flakes. For just about anything else, I prefer a, a broader bowl, sort of like a pot shape. Uh, definitely burly blends work uh, for me are much better in, in a pot shape. Uh, and a lot of key, I think, it gives you a lot more flavor in, in those shaped bowls as well. But that's a question that, you know, you ask 10 people, you'll get 13 different answers. <laughs> Thank you, Christian. <laughs> Christian tells me that as the months pass and I get paler because we won't have any sun, I'll blend right in with the wall. You see, Christian, I took your advice and I put some decoration up back there so it's not just a white wall. The bottom of the bowl is burned. Is it worth trying to save? You know, that's really up to you. I'm sorry I missed the name there. Um, if, if you want to save, you know, a lot of times I, I, I see pipes like Grebo's or Medico's and they'll need a lot of work. If you want to learn pipe repair, it's a great thing to do, you know, because it's, it's relatively inexpensive. If you mess it up, you haven't lost very much. The truth is, if a gray bow is too far gone, you can probably find another gray bow on eBay for $10, and you can buy a new gray bow for, what, $30? So it's really up to you. Um, now, I would not suggest anyone get a you know really far gone gray bow and send it to me to fix, because it's going to wind up costing more than it would cost to buy a new Savinelli. How would I, I just see how would you save the bowl? I missed the top of that comment, so not not sure um, what you meant by that. If there's burnout, uh, you could check out the videos that I've done on either pipe mud or pipe mortar. Have you ever crafted a pipe for your own use? And if so, would you consider commissions in the future? Thank you, my friend. Uh, no, I, I have. Well, yes, I have. Uh, it was a long time ago, and I have not revisited that. I do actually have some briar that I bought with plans to, to try doing some pipe carving. Uh, haven't really had the time to do it. Uh, I, I want to do it for myself. I'm just kind of curious about going through the process and everything. When I consider commissions, that's going to depend entirely on how it worked, how they looked, um, and how I felt about them. Certainly not until uh, <laughs> green side. Uh, certainly not until I felt like they were a really good quality, because I wouldn't want to sell anything to anyone that wasn't uh, a top-notch pipe. Thanks for the question. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I, I put that up on purpose. I knew a lot of guys would react to it. Can you show me a pipe he carved out of plywood? You're kidding, Christian. Plywood? Uh, no, Steve, I, I used to do cob mods, and they just take too much time. Um, just take really too much time, uh, and, you know, I'm thinking of this in a business sense, so I can make a cob mod and I can sell it, but how much can I really sell it for? In the end, it's a corn cob pipe, and it takes a lot of time to do them the way that, uh, well, Jim, that's, that's great. Uh, yeah, I, I would assume that I'm going to kill a lot more than three blocks before I get it right, <laughs> but, uh, you know, practice makes perfect. Yeah, I agree, Matthew. A plywood pipe, there's something wrong there. <laughs> some, some, I, I think Christian might be pulling our legs. He's got a, an unusual sense of humor, for sure. So he actually laminated up plywood to make a block and then made a pipe out of it? I... Huh? That's very strange. Was that Kitty that just said they made a pipe without power tools? That's, I, I know uh, one other person that's done that, Kitty. I'm sure others have, but I, I personally know one other person that, that did that. And uh, he made fantastic pipes. If you've ever seen me smoking... Um, the Briar Spirit pipes, they were made entirely with hand tools, and uh, they, were, they were remarkably good pipes. He uh, is, is no longer making pipes. He's not smoking. Oh, he doesn't smoke the plywood pipe. That's good. Uh, sure, Kitty, I'll... I'll uh, if, if, actually, I have a video, something about Briar Spirit pipes, so if you go back and look through, I know there's a... A lot to look through, but if you can find that Briar Spirit pipe video, it, it you'll see it. Uh, 
yeah, he, he did very nice work. So I tell you the, um, uh, great, great. Um, this whole live stream thing was, uh, I was, I, I was actually a little worried about doing it because I had never done it before. And I had heard that there were all these things about needing to install, uh, different pieces of software and everything. And, uh, I, I didn't know that I was going to be able to, to get it running tonight. And it turns out it is really easy. <laughs> You know, it's 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 so easy that uh, I'm surprised I haven't tried it before. Uh, that's a good question, Dave. I don't know. Um, Mrs. Canerod might be a little uh, little camera shy, but we we can see if she wants to appear at some point. The pups. The problem with them is they do not stay still long enough to uh, to actually meet. They they're very high energy dogs. They're uh, they're a mix of golden retriever and coonhound and while i love them dearly if you ever have a chance to get that mix don't do it picking up a 7la big's favorite is it well they're fantastic pipes i think you're going to enjoy it do i have a favorite pipe uh boy no <laughs> I'm, I'm sure i have like maybe i could i could probably pick out three that are favorites but they're favorites for different reasons you know i've got Favorites for sentimental reasons. Favorites because they smoke really well. Uh, yes, Kitty, you need at least 1,000 subs if you want to do the go live mobile um, live stream, which is what I'm doing. You can do live stream the more complicated way where you have to install the encoding software and all of that. Uh, you can do that with any number of subs. So it's, it's still possible, but it's a bit harder. Oh, Lunting Larry, I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. Larry, Larry says he's refurbishing his own pipes thanks to my videos. And uh, that that's something that I really, I, that's one of the main reasons I had made the videos is that I wanted people to, to start to do this themselves just to save the pipes that are out there. Um, yeah, I saw something about do I keep the pipes that I don't smoke anymore. Um, actually, most of the pipes that I do smoke... Uh, Oh, hi, Desert Pine Piper. Good, good to see that. Yeah, keep your eyes off the video. There's not much to see anyway. Um, yeah, I don't think I have very many pipes that I don't smoke uh, that I did. I have, a, I have actually a, quite a few unsmoked pipes, which I know people get mad about. It's not that I'm collecting them or anything. It's just that I really believe you have to spend a lot of time breaking in a pipe, and you've heard me talk about this repeatedly now. And uh, I just haven't had the time to break those in, so they're, they, they, they remain unsmoked for the most part. Uh, not a great deal of them, but probably five or six. Uh, I think of all the pipes I have, I only have maybe one or two that I've tried to smoke and just thought they were terrible and didn't want to continue. Lancaster County smoke brown wrapper cigarettes. Do they smoke pipes? I don't know if Amish smoke pipes, to be honest. I think they do. I, I, I know I've had Amish cigars, uh, or at least cigars made by Amish people. I don't know if they smoke them themselves. Do I have a daily tobacco? Um, it used to be Carter Hall. I mean, I used to basically start each day with Carter Hall. And lately, I, I, I kind of switched to Haunted Bookshop for a long time. Um, Steve just fired up some Haunted Bookshop, which, uh, by the way, don't try to buy Haunted Bookshop. It's it's not available, if anybody was wondering. Uh, you know, it just it just came back today. Uh, they just just uh, started selling it again. So if you're if you've been missing it, it's it's available at least at Smoking Pipes right now. Um, so yeah, I don't really have a daily tobacco anymore. Amish do smoke pipes. Thank you, Christian. Christian would know. He's uh, an authority on all things Amish. I might be coming to the bottom of this bowl. Yeah, I, I do think that that would be the case, Kitty. I don't think the Amish women are known for pipe smoking. <laughs> I, I don't want to offend any of my Amish friends, so... I actually live in an area that is very um, heavily Mennonite, which are 
related to Amish. Not, they're not as conservative as the Amish. Uh, I have not tried Voodoo Queen. I'm sorry, I missed that last one. Uh, it'll come back up next time somebody comments. You remember tobacco? My dad liked rum and maple. No, I, I don't remember that, Dave. I'm assuming that was an over-the-counter. There was a period, well, a long period, when you know there was sort of this boom in over-the-counter blends in like late 60s, early 70s, going forward. And uh, did I see? Yeah, this is true. <laughs> the Amish friends are never going to. Uh, <laughs> They're never going to get too excited. They're, they're not going to be offended by what I say here because they're not going to see it. That's funny. Um, yeah, so so there were, there was this sort of explosion of blends, and then when I started smoking, which was in the 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 eighties, they uh, they were starting to to diminish. So I remember seeing a lot of aromatic blends, and maybe rum and maple was one of them. I I just don't remember it, but I didn't at that point. I was pretty much exclusively smoking Captain Black, so I I just didn't pay attention to those. And then I've told the story about how I started to get into a more broad uh, uh, set of those uh, drugstore blends, and you know really learned a lot, especially about Burley from that. Big and Burley mixing. Oh, you've been smoking the mixture '79 too, huh, Everett? H and H Dark Fired. That's a that's a good one as well. I think we're done with number ten Downing Street. We're about. Uh, 22 minutes in, so we'll be getting to the contest maybe another 15 minutes or so. Sugar Barrel, that's that's good stuff. Can't get it anymore, though. Um, this is a little Phil Rivera pipe that I like quite a bit. Yeah, Everett, you know, it, it's one of those love it or hate it blends, and I thought I hated it, but it turns out I love it, too. Mixture 79. And I'm going to smoke a, uh, let's see, I'm, going to, I'm actually going to go with the Pareti Thanksgiving Day. I've been really liking this year's Thanksgiving Day. Uh, but you know what, I'm not going to use this pipe because it likes big bowls. And I'm going to use the uh, Savinelli, or the, it is a Hercules, uh, which is a very nice... Very broad bowl, and uh, Burleys work really well in this. And the uh, Peretti Thanksgiving Day smokes beautifully in it, so that's what I'm gonna have. So let me ask you a question, guys. So, what would you like to see more of on the channel? I, I know a lot of folks will say uh, restoration videos, but I've but I've done a lot of restoration videos, so I guess I'd like to know what do you want to see in restoration videos? Are you are you just interested in seeing pipes come back to life, or are there specific techniques that you'd like me to cover? What what are your thoughts on that? Carter Hall and a cob, that's good stuff. There's something about Carter Hall where it just really sings in a cob. Especially if you got a cup of coffee with it. Any thoughts on what you'd like to see in future videos? Corvette Jim wants to see it all. Well, stem making. Sure, Kitty, go ahead. So a lot of guys are just interested in, in pipes coming back to life. You know, that's something that I've I've, I've kind of been worried about. You know, I don't want to be too repetitive. Um, oh, thanks, Jim. Um, I don't want to be too repetitive with things. And, you know, when I'm making the video, I'm thinking, gee, I just did this. You know, they're going to get bored with this. But... Uh, you know, I guess you guys will tell me if you're getting bored. So maybe I'll just uh, just keep showing you pipes coming back to life. I don't like to do different sorts of... Uh, I don't know which ones are safe. I'll get to that in a second, Kitty. So, uh, 
I could do more customer pipes, but the problem is that slows things down, and I don't like to slow things down when somebody's paying me to fix their pipe. So I'll probably, uh, I'll find ways to, to do more. And I already got plans for several pipe refurb videos. Stem making without any power tools, that's going to be tough. Um, holes in the bowl, okay, Everett. Uh, the best thing I can tell you for that is to go and, and watch the video series that I did on uh, what was that pipe? Aldo Villani. Uh, I fixed a hole right through the bowl in that one. Hey, 2 a.m. pipe on the patio. How you doing, Onion? Making stems? Yep. Yeah, you could make a stem of wood. That's true. There are. I have seen pipes actually with briar stems. So more stem making is, is one of the requests, and, and that's uh, that'll be easier to do with my new lathe setup as well, because I can I can mount the camera up above that. Uh, before I actually had to put a tripod up on top of my workbench, and it was it was behind the lathe, and as I was working, you could see the tripod slowly dancing off towards the side and uh, impending doom the whole time. So you made one of wood, Kitty? Is that what you're you're saying there? Well, that's interesting. And with no power tools, well, it, that's a that's definitely a challenge. But like I said, I I've known people that make entire pipes that way, and they they can be quite beautiful. You know, power tools really, I mean, this is my basic philosophy on woodworking. Power tools can make things faster, but you have to have the skill to make things right before you can make them faster. So that's, that's really the challenge in anything. You know, you can buy a lathe and you can use it to make a, a stem blank, but then you still need the hand skills to, to make the, uh, the stem properly. And the only way to get those skills is to is to try. You know, it just takes time. So we're coming up on a on a half hour, and I think we're going to go for now about an hour. We'll have to see how it goes. Uh, for those that might have joined late, we've got two prizes we're going to be giving away tonight. One is a tin of uh, Cornell and Deal Black Frigate from 2016. And the other is a tin of uh, Hearth and Home Black House, the original issue of this blend, which was in 2014 in the original tin. I am drinking, since you asked, a Dogfish Head Namaste White Belgian Wit Beer. Uh, very nice light uh, wit beer with a, a bit of uh, orange flavor. Thank you. I, I appreciate that, uh, and I will no, knock my glasses over. I will. Uh, I would definitely try to keep them coming. Uh, and I'm glad you find them calming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Groove and Piper, no IPAs. I, uh, you know, IPAs are. Terribly, uh, terribly uh, popular. Uh, thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. But uh, I just never had a taste for them. I don't know. I, and I don't mind hops. It's just, that's an awful lot of hops. When I was in graduate school in Pittsburgh, um, yeah, I think I've seen Bell's Beer. And something, a true blessing to me. Oh, well, that is a miracle. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to hear that, and thank you for sharing that, that with us. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad the videos have been, have been uh, useful for you. Uh, yeah, when I was in graduate school, I, I uh, have, with a friend of mine, got into brewing, 
beer. And uh, we, we uh, experimented with hops. He actually grew hops in his, in his backyard. And uh, I was always the guy saying, no, no, not that many hops. <laughs> Pull back on that a bit. And uh, yeah, so I just never really had a, a taste for them. So IPAs just don't agree with my palate, but I know they're very, very popular. So if you want, I can tell you the story of how we almost uh, severely harmed ourselves making beer. But I'm not going to tell that story unless somebody asks for it. I haven't found it ghosting. Um, it, I, I haven't, I haven't found that it ghosts. I do find that it, it, it's one of those things that carries over to your next pipe because of the, like it, 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 it has a strong aftertaste. So if you smoke it first and then you smoke another blend afterwards, you'll continue to, to taste some of it. Some, I'm sorry, I should have repeated the question. Uh, the Durham Duke asked if uh, Thanksgiving day was ghosting the pipes. What did I do? Oh, okay. So you, you want to hear the, uh, the beer brewing story. So um, you guys know I'm a scientist. Uh, I was in graduate school in a, uh, a biology type department and we were brewing beer and we brewed this batch that just didn't carbonate for some reason. Um, it definitely fermented. Hey there, Mark. Good to see you. Uh, it definitely fermented, but it, it, you know, the alcohol content was correct. But it just didn't carbonate. It was flat. So we decided that we were going to try to fix that. And we had the whole setup. You know, we had like the the, the bottles and the, the, the capper for the for the bottles and everything. So we had this case of, of beer bottles. And uh, we put the beer into the bottles. And we sat in, in his kitchen, uh, both of us on a kitchen chair, with this case of beer bottles between us, you know, between our legs, facing one another. And we brought home some dry ice from the lab that we had chipped up. And because dry ice is carbon dioxide and we wanted to put CO2 into the, into the beer. So we sat there and dropped, he dropped a piece of dry ice, I put a cap on, and we just went through the whole case. But the first two beers we put into the refrigerator, which was right next to us. And then we continued through the rest of the case of beer. We had just put the last cap on, and there was this very loud bang inside the refrigerator. We opened the refrigerator up, and beer was pouring off of the shelf that we had put the beer on. The bottles had essentially disintegrated. They just exploded. There were little shards of glass everywhere. There was, I can still see this in, in my mind, there was this can of 7-Up, you know, soda can that was just spewing seven up out of the side of it because a piece of glass had gone into the can and we were looking at all this realizing that the two bombs that had just gone off in the freezer in the refrigerator rather were one thing but we still had 22 of them sitting between our legs and we had no idea when they were going to go off <laughs> so we had to very quickly drag that out into the yard and then uh, he, I mean, I did a couple and then kind of got scared and he, he did a couple. And I think ultimately we had about four, like, popping the caps off, I think we had about four or five bottles that we just thought it was getting too dangerous. And we just let them pop on their own. Uh, it was terrifying because if that box would have blown up, if we hadn't put those two in the fridge, uh, we would have at very best been blinded. <laughs> so it was, be, brewing beer is not always safe, kids. That's the bottom line. Well, things are going fast. Do not do this at home, absolutely. Glad you enjoyed it. Hey, 
Hey, Ben, the Artful Codger made it. Are, are you off work, Ben, or are you sneaking this in? Oh, kitty, don't start that conversation. Good for you, Ben. Hi, Jim. No problem being late. So we're just, since we've had some new guys come in, looks like we're up to about 40 folks now, 41. Um, yes, Michael, porters are, I mean, they're no more popular than any other beer, but I do see quite a few of them on menus. Um, and if you, I'll tell one more beer story before I, I recap on the contest. Um, if any of you guys are following me on Instagram, I've been doing this thing where when my wife and I go out to dinner, I... I don't know why, but for some reason I've just been choosing some very unusual beers. Like the other night I had a a sweet potato, a sweet potato ale, I think. It was actually really good, um, but I, not something I would normally order, but I've just been on this kind of weird beer kick. So I'll usually photograph the beer menu and, you know, point out which one I've, I've got and put a picture of the beer up with it. Uh, so that, that's been kind of fun. And it's been some, some unusual ones. And I've also been getting some unusual ones. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it does count as a vegetable. It's a good point. Uh, aging oak barrel explode in the back. I bet that was an event there, uh, 907 Piper. Uh, yeah, so it's just been kind of fun. So this is actually a fairly mundane uh, beer for me these days, uh, given some of the flavored stuff I've been drinking. But uh, it's been good quality. I'm, so I'm surprised how... You know, I, I read something like sweet potato beer, and I'm thinking this is going to be horrible, and then go and try it, and it's actually not bad. Thank you, uh, that Kentucky guy. <laughs> Took my glasses off. Uh, thank you. I, I am going to be doing more refurb videos, so you can look forward to them in the in the near future. Uh, thank you, Frank. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm very excited to get uh, get back to work here. <laughs> no, Mark, that's too much. That's too sweet for me. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. I, I didn't mean to make you thirsty. All right, folks. One one more time, and and uh, we'll we'll get to this in another five or ten minutes or so. So we're doing a contest tonight just to celebrate the. Uh, the, the what I've been calling the grand reopening of the shop, and I don't know if anyone else has thought about this. I have no idea what that means. I don't know why it's a grand reopening. I, I don't know. Uh, it's just what you seem to say when you're saying reopening. The word grand comes before it. Uh, I may do that, Christian. Depends on who wins, of course. Oh, I saw you say the pet. No, that's not going to happen. Anyway, um, the two items that are going to be won by one lucky viewer tonight. One is this tin of Cornell and Deal Black Frigate. This is from 2016. And this is a Latakia uh, Orientals and what they call a um, Navy Cavendish, which is a rum-soaked Virginia uh, Cavendish. It's all pressed together in a, in a nice plug. Uh, really good blend. I like it a lot for, around the holidays. And some um, Hearth and Home Black House, which is a Balkan Sobrani match, which is just really wonderful. And this is from... The original uh, release of this blend uh, in in the original tins before they switched over to the uh, to the all metal tins, and that's from 2014. Yes, yeah, Steve, I, I I'm glad you see it that way. I'm certainly uh, really happy with with the the, the way things turned out, and uh, it's I, you know I've done some work down here already. <laughs> Danny, I've done that. Uh, I, I I drink a lot of Yingling Lager, and uh, very often I'll you know I'll get the sweet potato beer, I'll drink it, and they'll come back and say, "Would you like another?" And I'll say, "No, I'll just take a Yingling." Uh, the nice thing, at least here in Pennsylvania, Yingling is pretty ubiquitous. You can get it just about anywhere, and uh, you know it's 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 good beer. There's there's nothing wrong with it. It's nothing fancy, but it's also a step above uh, the Millers and the Buds. Which are also good. Ah, good desert pine. Glad you made it. That's okay, Ben. You're you're gonna have to actually enter yourself, so you're you're safe. I I promise not to award you anything, <laughs> especially after uh, 
after I gypped you out of the pizza la the last time. Oh, you can't get Yingling there, Kevin. I, I thought it was actually nationwide. I'm, I'm uh, sorry to hear that. Uh, it's in Rhode Island. So let me just relight, and then I'm going to start to explain the contest rules, uh, which are really simple. And I, I hope this is going to work, so I'll, I'll tell you guys how I'm going to do it. So, so I'm going to ask you a question, and somebody's got to answer the question. Uh, oh, Indiana's the break there. Thank you, Eric. Glad you, glad you like it. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's really, I've done a little bit of work here so far, and it's really been very nice just to, to have an area to, to work in like this. So for the contest, I'm going to ask you a question, and you're going to answer the question in the comments. Uh, now, that's going to go one of two ways. I'm either going to ask you an easy question, and the fastest typist is going to win, or I'm going to ask you a difficult question, and the fastest Googler is going to win. And I don't want that to be the case. I want there to be some chance involved as well. So I'm going to ask you a question, and then I'm going to give you a number. And let's say I say the number 2, which I won't. That means the second person to give the right answer wins. And we'll identify that person. They'll send me their contact information. And uh, I'll, sh I'll ship them out the, uh, the Black Frigate and the Black House. And I just realized they both have black in the pay. I honestly did not plan it that way. Um, so let, let me know, as we're getting closer to the 45-minute point, let me know if you think that'll work. And we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and give it a try. You got any suggestions about whether or not that's going to work out? Good, good. And uh, guys, I'll, I'll tell you, I'm not going to exclude any international folks, so if, if you're international, you're, you're welcome to enter, and I will take care of the shipping, but you know I can't do anything about customs, so you're on your own with that. If, uh, if it gets through to you, that's fantastic. If it doesn't, then that's just sort of the, the luck of the draw. I don't know how many of you guys have had a chance to try this uh, Thanksgiving Day this year, but it's 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 really good. It's very much like it was a few years ago, and it's got all these nice uh, cinnamon notes to it that, that I that I really enjoy. I'm really glad to see so many people show up. I wasn't. Wasn't honestly expecting this many, and uh, you know, the names are going by so quickly that I can't really keep track of everyone and, and give everyone a shout out. But uh, you know, I hope you know that I appreciate you all. I don't know, Everett, if if Peretti ships to Canada. Um, if Christian's still on, he may have uh, tried to order from them. There you go. So they, they do. That, that's good. And Peretti's got some good quality stuff. I, I really like that. I'm, I'm smoking something now called a, uh, I think it's called Number 8 Slices. Really good burly flake. Uh, I was quite, quite impressed with it. Oh, thank you, Eric. Yeah, that must that must be really cool, especially when you can, uh, you know, it's one thing to to teach somebody something, but when you can actually see them physically using that information you've given them, that must be very rewarding. That's true, Ben. Uh, I've had some rather unfortunate interactions at Peretti. <laughs> uh, one one in person actually went into the shop and was uh, really surprised that they've been in business as long as they have, considering how I was treated, but. You know, life goes on. There's curmudgeons in every area. I 
I know um, Miss, a, a Mr. Peretti passed away not long ago, and uh, I don't remember the story, but he may have been the the last of the family to, to own that business, because that business, is, it goes back quite a ways. It was, I think it might be the oldest tobacconist in the, in the States. Yes, James, it's uh, it's definitely a full house. Good to see you. All right, we've passed 45 minutes, so so let's let's do this. Are are you all ready? Uh, so let me explain again. Simple contest. I'm going to ask a question, and I'm going to say second uh, answer, fourth answer, whatever number. You answer the question, and the whatever number I say, if I say fourth, the fourth correct answer wins. And what you will be winning is a tin of Black House from 2014 in the original tin from Hearth and Home and a tin of Black Frigate from 2016, Cornell and Deal. All right. Are you ready? I hope I can catch these uh, as they go by because it's going to be terrible if I can't. Uh, we'll have to go back and confirm with the, the replay if, if we run into trouble. All right, so the question is, in 1992, Cornell and Deal was founded by two people. Name the one who was not Craig Tarler, and you need to be the third response, the third correct response. No helping, Ben. Nope, nope. No correct answers so far. We have one correct answer. There we go. Desert Pine Piper was number three. Uh, the answer is Patty Tarler, Craig's wife. Uh, yeah, they both, uh, I don't know what that means, Eric. They both, um, uh, husband and wife, uh, decided to buy, I think it was Atlas Tobacco that they bought. And the story is that they actually brought it home in, uh, in a van, the entire business. So it was mostly recipes and, and you know, a few few bales of tobacco. Uh, so they bought that in 1992 and it is what it is today. Um, so I'm sorry I missed Eric's answer. I'm sure it was great <laughs> knowing Eric. Uh, so Desert Pine Piper, you were the third correct answer. So congratulations on that. If you would like to send me an email, uh, the address is canerodpiper at gmail.com. And you can also find that on my about page in case you, you didn't get it. Send me an email, send me your contact information, and uh, I'll get the tobaccos out to you. And congratulations. <laughs> Steve's still thinking. <laughs> you know, I didn't know if that would be an easy question or, or a tough one. And uh, I hadn't actually considered the, the Bob Ronowski angle. So, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people thought that he was involved but he actually came along later and uh, did some blending with uh, with Craig and I had I've talked about it before all right Brian good night thanks for thanks for tuning in yeah Danny uh, were they in North Carolina they started in Pennsylvania actually uh, I think they did move to North Carolina for a while and you could buy direct from them not only could you buy direct from them, but they would blend. Um, you, you could like have custom blends. And they had this really interesting thing where they would press anything as long as you bought a pound of it. So if you wanted to buy, you know, whatever haunted bookshop uh, and you bought a pound of it, you could get it pressed into a brick. Uh, so, yeah, it was, it was a really different business back then. I first came upon them in, I'd say it was probably 1996. And you couldn't mail order. They, uh, well, you could. Um, hi, Paul. Good to see you. Staying up at 2.38 a.m. Amazing. <laughs> I, I really appreciate that, Paul. Um, so back in, in uh, 96 or so, 
they had a website, but you couldn't order on it. You had to call them. And I called and uh, got Patty Tarler on the phone and said, you know, I wanted to order some tobacco. And she actually told me that she wasn't allowed to let any new customers order until they talked to Craig because he wanted to talk to them about what kind of tobaccos they liked and make sure that, uh, all right, Jim, enjoy and thanks for tuning in. He wanted to make sure that the tobacco that you were uh, getting was... Uh, Next time, Steve, I'll save that question for next time. So I, I, at the time, was smoking a lot of number 10 Downing Street, and you know, I told him that I had picked out these lot of Kia blends that I thought were going to be similar to that, and there was like a five-blend sampler that you could get. And I said, you know, these are the, the blends that I like, and he said, well, tell me a little bit about why you like it, and you know, I probably talked to him for a good half hour, and uh, he changed my order. He actually said, you don't want that one, why don't you try this, and I want you to try this one, it's not a lot of Kia blend, and and he opened my eyes to, to Burley, he, he uh, you know, he really changed me as a pipe smoker on that day. Uh, it's remarkable, and I never got a chance to meet him in person, which I, I wish I had, because uh, he was he was a remarkable guy. He really knew his tobacco, and he really uh, really cared about his customers. Oh, there's another. Uh, so Frank, you're having a Griffin cigar. That's uh, Mark in Rhode Island was talking about those, and I think the ones that I was thinking of when I was talking to Mark about this were Griffith, uh, which was by Emilio Cigar, uh, which is no longer in business. So these must be a different, uh, a different cigar called Griffin. I'll have to look for those. So unless there are any we're at 52 minutes now. I'm, I was thinking we'd do this for an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Um, <laughs> Everett's craving a cigar. Well, have one, Everett. Um, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to drag this out if folks don't have things they want to talk about. Uh, no, man, I haven't done that yet. I haven't yet. So... Uh, if there are any burning questions between now and, and uh, the one hour point, we'll certainly keep talking. Uh, but if not, we'll, we'll call it a night. Could you ask for a good aromatic tobacco? You sure could, Kitty, but uh, do you want me to recommend one? Oh, I see, Everett. Sorry, sorry to tempt you then. <laughs> ben, you're, you're a bad man. Uh, okay, Kitty. Uh, so I'm actually planning to do a video in the near future about uh, about aromatic tobaccos because I, I consider myself not to be an aromatic uh, smoker. And uh, you're getting some, some suggestions now as, as we go along, and I'm sure they're fantastic suggestions. But there have been a couple of aromatics over the years that have really... Uh, Thank you, Nicholas. Appreciate that. That have really um, um, sort of grabbed me and, and changed my mind about aromatics. One, I've, I've been for a long time smoking Cornell and Deal's uh, Autumn Evening, uh, which is a nice sort of maple flavored tobacco. My wife says it smells like a pancake house when I smoke it. Uh, uh, another is uh, Black Spice, which is something that the Artful Codger turned me on to a couple years ago as a, as a holiday blend, which I really like a lot. Uh, and one that um, I've only been smoking about, I actually brought it down here, and I think the last pipe I'm going to have tonight, I'm going to have of this. Um, this blend is from Dan Tobacco, so I think you guys in Europe will have an easier time getting it than we will, and it's called a sweet vanilla honeydew um, and <laughs> yes Eric I can this blend was was given to me by my my friend the Durham Duke and it is really good um, as an aromatic uh, take a look at it there he gave me quite a bit of it <laughs> and uh, thank you Larry thanks for tuning in 
th this is, um, I, I'm, I'm not really prepared to talk about the tobacco that much, except to say that it's a really good quality aromatic. And by good quality, I mean it's not, it's not wet, it's not goopy, it doesn't have any of the, um, the chemical taste that I get from a lot of aromatics. Uh, it's good quality tobacco. And the flavor of the, the, the topping is, is extremely good. So thank you, Durham Duke, for, for that. Good night, Naptown. Have a good evening. <laughs> Ben's hoarding his fingers. Hey, how, how come it was easy? It was okay to give them to trick or treaters, but you can't give them to artistic friends. So those would be my, my suggestions, Kitty, and you've seen other ones that are just as good. Oh, so you would deny the kids. Okay. <laughs> you might think I'm mean shaming Ben here, but uh, he shamed me the other night for... Uh, I forget what it was that I... I wanted to do. Um, what was it, Ben? I, I've completely forgotten now. There, there was something that you, you shamed me about on Instagram that I can't remember now. Obviously, it had a, a great emotional impact on me. Steve, I don't know if you're still on. I saw a question go by um, asking about the easiest material to make stems out of. And... Oh, the almost burned out bowl. I'll get to that. The, for me, I, I think uh, ebonite is, is the um, easiest material to work with in terms of making stems. I, 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 it shapes easily. It's, it's certainly, well, actually, the best, the easiest material to make stems out of is uh, bakelite. It, that stuff just machines beautifully and it files nicely and it, it's really nice. The dust is toxic. A lot of people don't like to use it. It's hard to find, so you're not gonna you're not gonna work with that. After that, uh, ebonite is you know it's it's a soft material. It machines easily. It's pretty easy to shape. Uh, my least favorite material to work with is acrylic. It's just a pain to work with it. It's very it likes to break. It likes to fracture, and uh, it's it's just really hard. It doesn't file easily. It clogs sandpaper. There's just nothing good about acrylic. <laughs> You were going to say toxic for, for the bakelite. The bakelite is not, not in its solid form, but the dust can be quite toxic. So that's that's what you have to be careful about if you're sanding it or anything. Now the question about fixing a, a hole in or a pipe that's got a burnout in it. Um, take a look at um, that's the same as vulcanite. Yeah, vulcanite and ebonite are the same thing. Um, yeah, they're, they are the same thing. There, there's some people that claim that ebonite, I, I can never remember which, but, but some people think that a factory stem is one and a handmade stem is the other. It's the same material. And vulcanite is actually, there. there's now a, I think a mineral that's officially named vulcanite. And so people have stopped using vulcanite as a term for the for ebonite, simply because it's confusing. Uh, so ebonite is, is the best term. Uh, for the person that asked about how to fix a burnout, uh, the two videos I recommend are the uh, the video I did on the 7 Le Bing's favorite, which had a large burnout in the side of it, and the video that I did on pipe mortar. Uh, that is, in my opinion, the best way to deal with a, a bowl that's starting to burn out, is to clean it out and use the pipe mortar to, to sort of fill in the, the, the void and create a new surface for cake to form. Klingonite? Does that make it easier to clench because it clings? I know it was a dorky Star, star Trek reference. I just wanted to tease you. 
What kind of reamer do I recommend? Um, so it depends. It depends a lot on what you want to do. Uh, for general maintenance, like you, you shouldn't be reaming, you know, you, you shouldn't be letting your pipes get to the point where you can't fit your finger in them. So if you're just doing general maintenance, the kind of reamer that Phil Rivera is selling right now, the triangular reamer, uh, you can also get them, Savinelli uh, used to make them, and I cannot remember what they were called. Um, those are great for just general maintenance, you know, monthly reaming out of the pipe, because you're not really taking off a lot of stuff. If you're doing restoration work, uh, there's two types, and I got them right here, so I can actually show you. This is the Castleford reamer set. And these are these little four bladed things that go down into the pipe and you turn. They've got a handle on them. So you can you can turn them. These are great for like hogging off a uh, very heavy cake. But they don't have a lot of finesse and they only come in four sizes. So if you need something in between there, you're kind of out of luck. The other that I use quite a bit is this which is called a senior reamer. Um, this is actually a knockoff of the senior reamer, but um, it has these, uh, oh, had an alarm going off there. Um, these three blades, which can extend out as you turn the thing, so you can expand it to fit the size of your bowl. And it's nice for like conical bottom bowls because it's got a little slope to the end there. And one of the real nice things about this is it's got a little drill bit in the handle for reaming out the shank, which is something you really should do, because cake does build up in the shank. So, those are the two reamers I would recommend. And I recommend you get both if you're doing restorations. If you're only maintaining your pipes, I highly recommend the reamers that Phil Rivera is making. And I did a video on those a while back. So, we'll do one last relight here, guys. I'm going to have to switch to matches because my lighter is starting to peter out a bit. Any uh, final questions as we wind this down? What pipe do you have with the largest bowl? Uh, Eric, that is going to be... Well, this guy that I smoked earlier, this... Uh, Savinelli Hercules, that's a pretty big bowl. I also have one of my Briar Spirit pipes has a, has a very, very large bowl on it. That's also a tall one, so that's that's a nice hybrid. Uh, can do, can do uh, things like Virginia Flakes, but it also does really well with Burleys. Those would probably be the two largest bowls. Uh, I just saw, what's your favorite cigar? Ah... Depends on the time of year, actually. In the summer, I really like those candelas I've been smoking. They're Arturo Fuente uh, that you've seen in my Friday Drive videos. Um, and uh, the rest of the year, I'm, I'm kind of fond of these Aroma de Cubas. I've been smoking those for a couple of years now. Uh, they're, they're good cigars. Um, Don Pepin uh, Garcia, good, good stuff. Uh, yeah, the Halloween pipe is fairly large, Ben. That's, that's a good point. Uh, I... I don't normally consider that in the, since it only comes out once a year. Yeah, Danny, those breast zippos are, are fantastic. And I, next time I'm going to, I'm going to have to bring down the, uh, I don't, I, I, I don't like to carry around the, um, the St. Benedict zippo that, that Ben gave me. I really love that lighter, uh, but I, I should bring it down more often and show it off more. Yeah, the Hercules are big. Um, they're really well-made pipes, too. I, I, I like the Hercules a lot. This is going out again. I said that was going to be the last relight, but I guess I lied. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. I appreciate you tuning in. Yeah, Steve and Kitty do their best thinking with the pipe. You know, I, I, I took a lot of flack for my uh, romanticizing pipe video the other day. Good night, Dave. Thanks for tuning in. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I, that I wished I had said during that video was that while I think we, 
we give the pipe too much credit for making life better. I do believe that the pipe does provide us with an opportunity to slow down and to, to relax and to think. So that is something that the pipe gives us. And that is the one, one area where I think there's, there's sort of an intersection between the way I look at it and the way the, uh, you know, the, the pipe will change your life folks look at it. And I know that nobody's really saying the pipe will change your life. I always know that it's, uh, it's, it's a, um, I touched a nerve when I see that many comments and that video really got a lot of comments, still getting comments. So it's quite good. The other thing that's kind of interesting about that video is, um, so I made a series of corn cob modification videos a couple years ago. And when I look at the, you know, number of views that videos are getting in my analytics, the top one is always one of those corn cob pipe modification videos. No matter what I put out, they do not get as many views as, as the cob mod videos. So for whatever reason, those are incredibly popular. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Eric's romancing his pipes. So the romanticism and pipe video actually knocked the corn cob pipe video out of the, the top, uh, the, the cob mod video out of the top notch. So that's how I know that it's, uh, I touched a nerve is when that moves down for, for a week or so. But it was, it was fun. It was, it was fun to sort of get that off my chest and also to, to engage in all the, the discussion around it. And uh, Eric, I now cannot get the image of you romancing the pipe out of my head. That's, you're, you're, you're an evil man. <laughs> Be careful, Ben. You're going to inspire his, his uh, photoshopping. What is the product you use for pipe mud? It's, uh, it's not a product. It's actually a mixture of several things. Um, it's uh, activated charcoal, um, plaster of Paris, and salt. And you can see that it's, it's the pipe mortar video that I made. Uh, if you were actually talking about pipe mud, that's just cigar ash and water. Uh, but I highly recommend the pipe mortar video uh, and pipe mortar. That's just been a much better product for me. I'm not touching that, Eric. Favorite outdoor spot in Pennsylvania for, I, I missed what that was. Uh, I've got a lot of favorite outdoor spots in Pennsylvania, though. I, I really like Central PA, uh, a lot of good fishing spots there. There's an area called Fly Fisherman's Paradise that I, that I really love uh, in the State College area. Closer to home, um, you know, Valley Creek, going through Valley Forge Park, very close to the city, very, very much an urban area. It's beautiful, and it's a fantastic trout stream, and I, I like going there quite a bit. And then Lake Nakamixon, where I think I've done a video or two, as well as the Little Lehigh River, where I was uh, last week. Uh, those, those would probably be the top outdoor spots for me. You have a cob that you just bought that needs to be repaired. That Well, I don't know if I would put much effort into that. What's my favorite Burley Flake and Codger Blend? Uh, Codger Blend is going to be Carter Hall. Um, then that's just ingrained in me. Um, I'll get to that, Danny. So, so the Codger Blend is, is Carter Hall. Uh, Burley Flake, you know, I, I've really been enjoying Burley Flake number one from Cornell and Deal. It's, it's good stuff. Um, I like it a lot, but I just recently got this uh, number eight slices. I think it's called from L.J. Peretti, and it's fantastic. I I uh, I'm going to buy a pound of it next next time I order tobacco. It's it's that good. And that's a Virginia Burley flake, but the Burley's very uh, very pronounced in it, so it's good stuff. Uh, Danny asked me a question that I wanted to. Oh, do I have any three twenties? Yes, I have one unsmoked. Uh, I bought it when uh, my wife and I were out in Los Angeles 
then we went to Kramer Tobacco uh, before the, it was actually just a few months before the shop closed. Uh, we didn't know it was closing at the time, and we talked to I think her name was Marcia that ran the shop, uh, who was Kramer, Mr. Kramer's daughter. And she told us that she had just made a deal. She wouldn't tell us who it was with, but she made a deal to have someone blend her father's tobaccos. So that's why um, Smoking Pipes now has Kramer Tobacco. Um, I'm sorry, that went by. Subtle match. She wants to order it by the pound. Have you ever tried the match? Uh, the match of what, Eric? I, I couldn't catch all that. It went by really fast, and the top scrolled off. So we were at Kramer Tobacco, and I bought that little, um, uh, can we start over? Sure, Jack, uh, just give me a few minutes and I'll, I'll get to that. Um, Jack wants us to start over, because he got here late. Um, Nearup, the little Nearup pipe that I smoke a lot. We bought that, and that's been a wonderful pipe. And they also, she had a beautiful 7LA320 that I bought. And I knew that I, I had always been uncomfortable with the shape and I bought it because it was such a popular pipe and I was in this, you know, historic place and thought, um, wood is blended by C&D, Bona Piper. I, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Sutliff Carter Hall match. Oh, um, I've had, I, I've had Chatham Manor. I don't know if that's the, I don't think that's the Sutliff match. I think that's the, uh. The hearth and home version. I, I don't think I've had the Sutliff match. Um, Carter Hall's not that expensive, though. I, I just buy it, you know, by the tub. Uh, I'd rather support them continuing to produce Carter Hall and not worry about the matches, but that's just me personally. So, anyway, bought the 320. This is a very long answer to your question, Danny. Bought the 320, have not taken it out of the box. Ah, is that right, Ben? So, so then it is the Sutliff match that I've had, and it's fine. It's uh, it's not Carter Hall, but it's it's similar. Yeah, Kramer's was a great place, uh, really was. Uh, I, I I really enjoyed going there and seeing she she still had her father's pipe repair shop set up with his lathe and everything, and that was that was really cool to see because it was it was definitely. You know, it was a historic place. You know, you had people like uh, Danny Kay coming in there to buy tobacco, and this was where his pipe was polished for him while he waited. You know, it's, it's such a, such a, a cool history that, that that shop had, and it's a shame it had to close. But this is the way of things. <laughs> asking Ben if there's a velvet match, you know he's going to say <laughs> there's no match for it. Yeah, it's called velvet. <laughs> yeah, I knew that was coming. We've gotten to the bottom of that bowl. And since we've degenerated into velvet worship, I think I'm going to call it a night. Velvet rules. You know, he actually believes that, Everett. you got to be careful. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this. I had a great time. Uh, this is not something I'm going to be doing every week, uh, but... I'm, I'm certainly going to do it again because it was a lot of fun. Uh, if you're still on Desert Pine Piper, remember, drop me an email with your, uh, your contact information so I can get uh, the tobacco in the mail to you. Uh, congratulations on the win. Thanks, everyone, for, for joining. It's really been a great time, and I look forward to catching you all uh, very soon. Take care.